the world's hunger for energy is insatiable and the race for clean alternatives is reaching a fever pitch. Amidst this frenzy, a technological marvel called Small Modular Reactors, or SMRs, is emerging from the shadows. Imagine miniature nuclear power plants, capable of producing up to 300 million watts of electric capacity, whilst also being mass-produced in factories and shipped to any location around the world. These innovative reactors are often as small as a school bus, and a fraction of the size of their traditional counterparts. SMR's boats enhance safety features, often relying on natural forces like convection for cooling, eliminating the need for complex external systems. Some SMR's are even designed with advanced fuels and closed fuel cycles, minimalizing waste and extending operation life. Yet, despite decades of research and development, SMRs have yet to become widespread. Are these compact powerhouses truly the revolutionary energy solution they claim to be? Or is there more to this story than meets the eye? The problem with big nuclear. Let's go back to 1986. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that left an indeliable mark on the nuclear industry. An explosion and fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine released massive amounts of radioactive material into the environment. This disaster not only caused immediate loss of life and long-term health issues, but also led to the evacuation of entire towns. The fallout from Chernobyl caused a worldwide re-evaluation of nuclear safety and halted many nuclear projects in their tracks. Governments cut funding and several existing reactors were shut down. Fast forward to 2011, Fukushima disaster in Japan reignited global fears about nuclear power. An earthquake and subsequent tsunami led to the failure of cooling systems at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, resulting in meltdowns in three of the plant's reactors. Radioactive material was released into the surrounding area, leading to widespread contamination and long-term environmental and health concerns. This incident severely damaged public confidence in nuclear power and prompted another wave of shutdowns and project cancellations worldwide. These disasters highlighted the inherent risks associated with traditional nuclear reactors. Large reactors, while efficient in producing significant amounts of energy, come with high stakes. They are expensive to build and maintain, and the potential for catastrophic failure, although rare, can have devastating consequences. The economic factors of scale mean that nuclear reactors tend to be very large, making their construction complex and costly. The International Energy Agency IEA, and other experts recognize the critical role nuclear energy must play in reducing carbon emissions and combating climate change. Nuclear power provides a reliable, low-carbon energy source that can operate continuously. Unlike intermittent renewable sources like wind and solar. However, the significant financial and safety challenges associated with building and maintaining large reactors have made it difficult for nuclear power to expand at the necessary scale. In the wake of these challenges, the idea of small modular reactors, SMRs, began to gain traction. Researchers at Oregon State University introduced a new strategy, build smaller modular reactors. This concept was simple yet revolutionary. By focusing on smaller reactors, they aim to make nuclear power more adaptable, safer and cost efficient. SMRs are designed to be built in a factory setting rather than on site. This allows for the use of standardized modules, which can be produced efficiently and at a lower cost. These modules can then be transported to the site and assembled much more quickly than traditional reactors. The smaller size of SMRs also reduces the complexity of construction and the potential risks associated with large-scale nuclear plants. The modular approach of SMRs promises several advantages. First, it allows for economics of mass production. Just as cars or aeroplanes are built using standardized parts and processes, 
SMRs can be manufactured in a consistent, controlled environment. This reduces costs and construction times. Second, SMRs can be deployed incrementally, instead of committing to a massive single project investment in utilities can add capacity gradually, matching demand and budget constraints. SMRs are designed to generate both thermal and electrical energy. Some gas-cooled reactor designs can drive a gas turbine directly, making the use of thermal energy more efficient. The heat produced can also be used in hydrogen production and other industrial operations, such as desalinization and extraction of oil from oil sands. These mini reactors can maintain consistent heat output while adjusting their power output based on electricity demand, providing flexibility and stability to the power grid. This load flowing capability allows SMRs to meet varying energy needs efficiently. The versatility of SMRs extends to congeneration, where the heat produced is used for multiple purposes. District heating, desalinization, and hydrogen production are proposed congeneration options. For desalinization, techniques like reverse osmosis membranes and thermal evaporators are used. The thermal process involving multi-stage flash distillation SMF and multi-effect desalinization MED, uses the heat directly, avoiding the conversion of thermal power into electricity. This approach is highly efficient and can provide fresh water in arid regions. SMRs come in various designs, each with unique features and benefits. These designs are rooted in the fundamental principles of nuclear fission, where a nuclear fission chain reaction is required to generate power. They can be broadly categorized based on their cooling methods, which include light water, high temperature gas, liquid metal, and molten salt reactors. Each type brings distinct advantages and uses. Light water reactors are the most common type of SMR. They use ordinary water as both a coolant and a neutron modifier. This design closely resembles traditional large-scale nuclear reactors, which makes it easier to adapt existing regulations and standards for their approval. Light water reactors are reliable and well understood, making them a practical choice for early SMR deployments. Typically, these reactors produce up to 300 million watts of power, sufficient to supply electricity to a small city. Their smaller size and standardized modules allow them to be manufactured in a factory setting and transported to the site for assembly, significantly reducing construction times and costs. Then there's high temperature gas cooled reactors, HTGRs, which uses gas like helium as a coolant. Helium is chosen because it remains stable and efficient at high temperatures, providing excellent thermal efficiency. HGRs operate at much higher temperatures than light water reactors, which can make them more efficient and versatile. These reactors can directly drive turbines, bypassing the need to boil water. The high temperatures also make them sustainable for industrial processes requiring significant heat, such as hydrogen production and petroleum processing. HTGRs can be used for desalinization, converting seawater into fresh water, and addressing water scarcity in many regions. There's also liquid metal cooled reactors. They use metal like sodium or lead bismuth eutechnic, LBE, as coolants. These metals have excellent thermal conductivity, allowing for efficient heat transfer. Sodium cooled reactors are another example. These have been a focus since the early days of nuclear development and continue to be prominent choice for SMRs. Liquid metal coolants enable these reactors to operate at high temperatures and lower pressures, enhancing both safety and efficiency. These reactors can also function as breeder reactors, which generate more fissile material than they consume. This is achieved by surrounding the core with a blanket of uranium-238, which captures neutrons and transforms into plutonium-239, a usable fuel. This process provides a sustainable fuel cycle, reducing waste and extending the life of nuclear fuel supplies. Finally, you have molten salt reactors, which use a mixture of salts as both coolant and fuel carrier. This design allows the reactor to operate at atmospheric pressure, reducing the risk of explosive failures. 
Molten salt reactors can achieve high thermal efficiencies and are capable of using various fuel types, including thorium. Their high operating temperatures make them ideal for industrial applications and electricity generation. One of the inherent safety features of MSRs is that, in case of overheating, the molten salt can drain into a separate containment area where it cools and solidifies, stopping the nuclear reaction without a need for external intervention. Despite the promising potential of SMRs, several challenges must be addressed before they can become a mainstream energy source. One significant hurdle is the economic viability of these reactors. While SMRs are cheaper to build compared to traditional reactors, they also generate less power, which means lower revenue. This creates a financial challenge, particularly in markets driven by profitability. The regulatory landscape is another barrier. Nuclear projects are subject to stringent regulations to ensure safety and environmental protection. These regulations can lead to delays and increased costs. For SMRs to succeed, there needs to be a balance between maintaining high safety standards and streamlining regulatory processes. With the right support and investment, these small reactors could revolutionise nuclear energy, making it safer, more accessible and more efficient. Let us know in the comments, do you think SMRs are the future of nuclear energy? If you found this content fascinating, please like, subscribe and share. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update.